Okay, let's do a good old fashioned Amazon Japan order unboxing. Ordered it on July 15th, delivered to me on the 20th. That includes a Saturday and a Sunday in there. Five days DHL, came in two pieces. It shipped out of two different Japanese warehouses, uh, but it was all the part of the same order. So let's open it up. This one is gonna come as no surprise to anybody who's watched my channel. Yes, yes. Some number one Phillips, but it's not Phillips. It's really Japanese industrial standard. These are kind of their new, or I don't know, it's new to me, this nice kind of anodized type. We'll take a closer look at that. And then we've got this box, this is gonna be kind of a diverse order. It's not just tools in here. All right, so I have not been inside this box yet. All right. So, oh yeah, nice, okay. By the way, uh, this is not the only order I made from Japan this summer. I've made a whole bunch of orders from Japan this summer. I just thought, you know, I should probably get back to doing, doing an unboxing. I think people, well, some people I know like, like these. All right, let's see here, what do we got here? Okay, so, so right off the bat, this stuff right here is probably confusing most of my viewers because these aren't tools. So, <laughs> so these are pen cases by a company called Lee Hit Labs. Uh, and it's a Japanese company. These are made in China. They do have products that are made in Japan. However, these were a very unexpected, super awesome grand slam gift that I got my little niece and uh, ended up creating a few jealousies with uh, some of my other nieces and nephews and even my sister. Uh, so. These, <laughs> these, I don't, I don't know, how do, how do I explain these? I'm gonna show these to you, uh, but these are kind of a gift idea. I'm not a good, I'm not an awesome gift giver, so I don't, it's, it's very rare that I hit a grand slam when it comes to choosing a gift. These were a grand slam. Uh, so I've got some stationary items. Oh yeah, these are the... Pro Plus from Mitsubishi. I believe these are made in Japan. This is some erasers. These are, uh, oh, well, I totally misunderstood what this was because I thought this was a paperless, or sorry, a stapleless stapler, and it's not. <laughs> what did I buy here? Okay, anyway, all right, that has me curious. I thought that that was one of these. And this is a, it's a paper stapler that doesn't use staples, it just uses paper. It folds the paper in on itself. So you probably have seen those before, maybe some of you haven't. So this is, a, yeah, the KTC. Wow, these are a lot larger than the photograph on the Amazon website. This I'm very pleased with. That is a pleasant surprise. I like pleasant surprises, don't we all? Okay, so here's some more bits from Vessel. This is an anodized type. Hmm, okay. This is an eraser. I'll put that with the stationary items. Uh, these are tape dispensers, uh, single-sided uh, model painting masking tape and double-sided. Okay, and these are, these are gonna be pretty interesting. I saw those in a video um, and uh, they looked really interesting to me. Okay, that's interesting. That's by Vessel. This is by Top. So these are some quarter to, quarter hex to quarter 
socket drive. So then these are the short versions of the insulated annex bit, number, number two and number one. I know they, they seem the same diameter, right? Well, they are, but one's a number two and one's a number one. Uh, this is a, this is for splitting and cracking uh, uh, part, plastic parts that have just a thin, fine um, seam. More vessel bits. Actually, that was the, those were the bits in the other one. Oh yes, this is the Energel 0.7 colored pens. Are these made in Japan? Made in Japan, yes they are. Okay, and then this one. Okay, and then this is a little scissors for my niece. Oh, made in China, okay, well. It was only a few bucks, I think. And then this is a Top Tools adapter. So we're gonna take a look at that. But this one here, so let's start with this. This is, is this made in Japan? Come on, guys. Is this made in Japan? You know, it might, it might say it might say that it's made in Japan, but I don't know. Um, I wonder what would happen if I held the Google Translate app up to that. Okay, so that's, that's not working. So I don't know if this is made in Japan or not. Oh, ha, 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 it's on the front, not on the back. Made in Sanjo, Japan. This is by Kiba. And you may recall that I bought the Fujia and I really liked it, but I gotta say, I think this is This feels tighter than the uh, Fujia, although I don't understand why there's these large gaps here. And you can see here the tolerances on everything are quite good. The spring here is nice on the Kiba, and I kind of wish that the Fujia had that. This Fujia works wonderfully for cutting this type of cable. And, and I was working on a project where I had to cut this two gauge copper. I'll just do one full chunk, okay? It, it does do it, but it's not easy. Okay, I'm actually not gonna do it. Well, okay, all right, I am, there. All right, so that's that's what that one is like going all the way through. Let me just do a half snip at a time, which is the way I was actually cutting it. Doing it like a half snip at a time, all right? I thought, oh, that's kind of hard to do. I'm gonna go and get some nice Knipex cable cutters. Okay, so what are those like? Well, those cut this super easy All right so everything 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 cuts through this really easily all right now this it's it's slightly easier than this one it isn't it isn't as it isn't as much of an improvement as i was hoping it would be This one is probably the better one, a little bit easier. So let's try the Kiba, take a full chunk. Oh my goodness, wow. 
Wow, what in the world? Okay, that was, that was by far the easiest. <sighs> okay, those are thin and sharp and they work really well, okay? Well, all right, I just became very, very happy with my Kiba. That is, that is better than the Knipex. That's better than the Knipex. I can't believe it. I absolutely cannot believe it. Wow. I can feel it going through, so I have to, you got to kind of slow down and let it, let it do the cutting because it's cutting. Oh, so now that I've had a chance to take a closer look at the Kiba versus the Fujia, the Fujia does have the thinner blades and we can see that right here, that the blades are thinner on the Fujia. However, the angle that these are sharpened at is different. The Kiba is less blunt. This is now one of my favorite side cutters. Okay, so let's look at the top adapter here. So this has, it can take a 13 millimeter wrench. You can put a 13 millimeter wrench on there. Um, not sure why I would need to do that. The main thing I wanted was to be able to put an adapter in a drill chuck and have something that would fit the Asian anvil so that I could avoid having to cut four millimeters off the ends of all of my, of not all the Asian bits I have, but some of the Asian bits so that they work in a, a drill, a power tool. This is machined all one piece. There's actually a little bit of wobble If I put it in the chuck this far, there's wobble. If I put it in this far, there's a little bit there, but it's just about nothing. So when they, when they machined that little detent on the end of the anvil, uh, it, it somehow that process seems to be putting a little bit of a bend in there. Okay, so then I got two of these quarter hex to quarter socket adapters. And I can't remember why. I was gonna do a comparison. I was also trying to solve a problem and I can't remember what it was. That's, that's one of the problems with putting things in my Amazon cart and letting it sit there for a month is, is that I can't remember why I put it in there. but. I knew there was a reason and uh, at some point I'll remember what the reason was and how do I get this thing out of here? Wow, okay, let's see here. So let's, where is this made? This is, doesn't say that it's made in Japan or if it does, I can't read it. So if anybody knows whether or not this says it's made in Japan, let me know because I can't read that and we all I already figured out that the Google Translate app is just about completely worthless when it comes to Japanese all right that's the top tools that is a very compact little adapter all right that's that one here's the vessel brand
This one, I would be shocked if it's not made in Japan, but I don't see anything specifically that says that it is. So that is the vessel. So that's the difference. Top is on the left, vessel is on the right. Okay, there's those. So these bits used to come with this finish, this kind of blackened finish. And now they've been arriving with this nice anodizing on them or whatever it is, I don't know. It's really made these into nice bits. And I know that Vessel has uh, different grades and this one, this one is a lower grade than this one is. I think this is their professional grade and this is more of their uh, DIY or homeowner grade. Um, I, I'll look in their catalog and see if I can figure out specifically what they're calling the difference between these two grades. All right, and then we got the shorter versions of these Annex brand and you're insulated. There's no metal conducting between this end and this end. There's just a complete gap right there. This one is number two Phillips and this one is number one. It's not Phillips, it's actually JIS. Okay. Got that. Let's take a look at this. Is the, the parts separate tool. Escot. I don't know what that means, but uh, uh, splitting tools? I don't know. What do, you, what do you even call this thing? You know, but uh, it, this is nice. These, these edges here are a little sharp. I don't know if that's by design. Like it, it could almost be used, used as a scraper. And there's, there is a straight edge here. Seems like that could scrape. Oh, sure. And then they have like a French curve here. So you have different radiuses. That's gotta be what they're going after here so that you can scrape. Cause these, these edges are sharp enough to, to scrape plastic or scrape wood. Sure, that's, that's what all those edges are. It's gotta be, it's gotta be. Well, if it's not, that's what I'm gonna use it for. This is uh, made in China. That is the Doyusha Parts Separate Tool. We got these, the KTC. These are much more substantial than the photograph made them appear on the Amazon Japan website. These are really nice. I mean, the photos make them look like they're kind of cheap little toys. These are really good. So this is the, this is the AP201N, the AP201-10P, the AP201-W, the AP201-10A. These are made in Japan by KTC. It says ATP2014. I don't know if that's a year or if that's the model number for the kit. Don't know. But these are these are nice. This is this is good stuff. Kyoto Tool Company, Japan, handy remover. Yeah, these are these are these are gonna be good. These are gonna be nice. This is really nice and rugged.
All right, so this, let's see here. Should we do the, let's do these tape dispensers. Let's take a look at these. If only I had a scissors. Oh, hey, look at that. We got one right here. So this one is actually going to be a gift for my niece. So this one is a child's scissors. Seems like seems like the highest quality children's scissors I've ever seen. So Nice job. All right, these are, oh, everything is in Japanese. I cannot tell, I do not know. So again, I saw a, a YouTuber um, using one of these. And I was like, man, I gotta get some of those, get some of those. Those look really neat. So you go like this and you've got a little piece of masking. And it's uh, it's it's the slight slightly sticky kind, right? So it's for painting models. So I'll use this for rocketry. I have a bunch of model rocket kits I still haven't built. And uh, this will be good for masking off a fin, like I wanna just paint one fin a different color, or I wanna put a strip down the side. I can do that with this. Okay, wow, that is the, that is the nicest masking tape dispenser I think I've ever seen, okay. And it's probably the only one that I've ever seen. So this is double stick tape. I don't even know how this is going to work because the, okay, so this comes out. It doesn't automatically peel the top off, which I suppose makes sense. It, the cutters make a nice cut. You can see there's no tearing. This Nichiban company has their own refills for this. I don't know if the American refills will work in this or not, like the 3M. So I don't know about that. Oh, okay, that easily comes apart. All right, hold on. Let me go get some let me go get some American double stick tape and see if it fits in there. Okay, so I've got some of the 3M. This is the 3M double stick tape that typically comes with those window treatment kits for cold weather. You put, you put this uh, for putting a thin plastic over your windows. Okay, window insulator tape. Okay, so let's see if that fits in here. And I can tell that this Nichiban tape is wider. Let's see here, how does this want to come out of here? Okay, not too bad now. So here's the differences in the thickness. So this is the Scotch window tape and the Nichiban. So they're not a direct match, unless it's just the No, something doesn't work right because the size isn't right. It's not, there's some little feed dog teeth there that aren't catching it because of the size isn't right. So this does not work in here. Is it fed in like this? Yeah, okay. So that's how that goes in there. Yeah, it's really nice. Okay, in editing, I realized I forgot to show the washi tape. 
Okay, washi tape is 15 millimeters and this is 15 millimeters. So these, these are both the same thickness. That means that 15 millimeter wide washi tape has a good chance of working in here. We're gonna find out if this can be the next greatest washi tape dispenser. See, washi tape isn't, isn't as, it, it's, it's more bendy than this. This has a kind of a stiffer backing on it, whereas this is more bendy, for lack of a better word. Come on, let's just go like this. The washi tape has a little bit different kind of an adhesive on it. Well, that looks like it's working pretty good to me. Wow, okay. So that's, that's working for washi tape. There we go. The next closest thing to a tool, which is these staplers. So these are stapleless staplers. These are made in China. The brand is Kokuyo. So what does this do? Well, I have had a chance to mess with it a little bit. So you take some paper, you go in at the corner like this, then it, it bottoms out in there. You press it and it crimps the edge in such a way that the paper sticks together. Now, it crimps it also in such a way that it kind of weakens the paper and I don't know if it's intended to be a tear off tab like that, you tear you can then tear off the tab and the pages will separate. I don't know, I, if it wasn't intended, it sure seems to work well to do that. Um, and I can't really read the description. Well, let's look at the photographs. Let's look at the pictographs here. So they show it also working on an edge Okay, let's, let's try it on an edge once. What does that do on an edge? I would imagine it does the same thing right there. So how strong is that? It's, it's not, I mean, definitely not as strong as a staple. Not too bad. Okay, well that's interesting. That is not what I thought I was getting. I thought I was getting one of these that just sat flat on a desk and you could just kind of kind of punch it like that. So this is the Kokuyo Stapeless Stapler, uh, also made in China. And it has a clear top and it lets you see the mechanism that creates the paper staple, and it's kind of cool. I kind of like it. It's fun to play with. All right, so let's see here. Go like that. And there is a paper staple, just like that. Okay. Doesn't seem very strong, but it's definitely not ever gonna run out of staples.
whoops, I missed a sheet. Let's go like this. See how it does that. I would say it's not as strong as a staple, a metal staple, um, but it is uh, fun and interesting and it's never going to run out of staples. I think it says it goes through 10 sheets. Let's see here, I don't know how many this is. Three folded, uh, three times, what is that, four? So that's what, 12 sheets? Oh yeah, and it barely fits. Oh yeah, that's too much. Yeah, yeah, 10 sheets is about the max. Anyway, that's pretty interesting. I. I had to get one of those. So those are my stapleless staplers. All right, now I'm gonna look at stationary items. I gotta, I gotta rearrange everything because uh, these things are pretty cool. The erasers, everybody knows about those, but then I gotta talk about these and I got a lot to say about these. Um, so if you're interested in those items, uh, gift ideas and all these awesome Japanese stationary items. Stay tuned.